Hi, my name's Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. You might recognise these. These are the older generation's Bose QC headphones, and they were absolutely fantastic. I think they're probably one of the best headphones I've ever ordered. And in fact, even the bag is great. I mean, this whole kit was just a fantastic kit. And I dare I say it, I think they work better than they kind of uh, the modern ones. But oh, hang on a minute. These have been shoved in the uh, bag for ages and it looks like they need a little bit more repair than I was intending. The reason I haven't been using these ones though is for this reason and that's the battery door is broken. Um, and by the way, look, I've got a couple of wires here because I actually broke uh, the wire in an aeroplane once. It does have an adapter somewhere among them. No, it doesn't have an adapter because, uh, yeah, it uses this. There's, a, there's a, an attenuation in the headphone thing, by the way, when you plug that in. So I broke the wire, then I fixed the wire, and then I bought another wire. So that's all the wires. But I want to show you that this, this is the real issue. Though. This is the main issue why I stopped using it altogether. And that's because there's a battery door on these hidden behind one of those. There you go. It's hidden behind there. And that's pretty much uh, contemporary. Uh, the, the current models also use a somewhat similar battery door that you sort of put your finger in and that pops out. And it broke for whatever reason. And I remember it sort of became a, an uneconomic repair. Um, however now looking at these ear cups maybe maybe there's more repair needed but what i thought was if i can get this working again just get it working somehow um i may well just go and get the rest of this oops repaired and get some more uh, ear cups and uh, bring them back in service because these are by not cheap headphones by any means so uh, they're definitely worth using and um, i could use them either on the uh, on an airplane train out and about or you know just back at my desk i mean it's again proper bose quiet comfort 15 works really super well definitely worth uh salvaging so first things first i'm just gonna see how we get into them and uh i can see a screw in there there's definitely a little screw in there and there's this this pad if i can just remove this pad uh off the driver and how's that it's just kind of glued in. I think I might have popped that off before. So you see how it sort of came away quite easily. It does seem to be... What is that? There's uh, definitely uh, this interesting kind of ribbon cable there. And it, is it... I think there's a microphone in here. Is that the microphone listening to what it's putting in your... I mean, I don't really know how they work. I always assume that they are, you know, listening to something. And you kind of see this grill on the back. You kind of assume there's a mic in there, but... Maybe there's not, but we probably reveal something now and have a look. So I'm just going to pop the screws out. There is a lot of space in there, though. I wonder how much of that space your ear sort of fits into. It does sort of look like you could have done something there, but that's where the battery is in that part there, and there's not a massive amount there. Now, one of our screws has already uh, jumped ship and tried to... Oh no! Right, we have one screw that is well and truly in the micro uh, in the speaker. So we need to make sure we get that one out. Okay, so we got your bits of plastic that say balls, bits of pl oh, yeah, all over. And uh, interesting enough, you have that grill. See the grill there? Oops, nothing behind it. <laughs> Although. There is a microphone higher up, so there is... Ah, so you get these little three holes on the bows there, and then there's a microphone that lies with that. So I don't know, so that grill is just uh, some sort of balancing grill. Okay, I'm just seeing if that knob comes off. Let's leave that on. Um, I'm a bit worried about that screw now, because the speaker definitely is uh, glued in there, and... Uh, got uh, a component that I would like to kind of retrieve if possible without this oh, I can see it I can see it in there crikey that is a tricky bugger to get out come on now if I can just get a tiny grip you probably almost it's crazy, all these angles in here. I know you, you can't see it. There's no way I could even get the camera in to show you that. But 
if you're doing this at home, take every care. There we go. In getting the screws out before they jump on that magnet, because you're going to get stuffed otherwise. Right. Okay. I think we're ready to uh, go in now deep. So you can see there here. I've got a wire. So that was the wire that's connected to the top of the battery. And then right down there, which is this one, is another wire. And you can see that's been sealed. So that's tacked into the bottom of the battery contact and it goes right up. So that's pretty much all we've got to play with, really. There's not a massive amount of room. And then there's a wire here that's coming out through here. And that's the wire that goes to the other side. So that's the headphone wire. So be careful of those. So Again, so you've got a microphone that's on the outside. It looks like you've got a microphone that's on the inside, and that's potentially its wire there. Um, you've got the speaker to the other side, and then you've got uh, this guy, which is the, the speaker in your ear. I'm just looking there. There's an interesting kind of wire that's been tapped there. Is that something? Ah, oh, that's the wire for that other mic in there. This is so... Crazy. Hmm. So, ah, <laughs> that's the wire for this speaker. Right. Gosh, all that babbling. I think we've figured it all out now. It's, 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 it's definitely a, uh, you know, complicated design. You know, these are expensive headphones, but if you look inside normal headphones, you don't get all of that bloody complexity. So, fair play to Bose. I'll uh, forgive you for charging a fair amount of money for these. So what are our options really? I mean, we can obviously put in a regular cell. And I'm trying to see, could we get away? I'm pretty sure we can't get away with this one um, with something else that is probably rechargeable because we know that this battery snap is really hard to fix. So you need a connection from there coming through. I mean, mm -mm -mm -mm. Maybe. Can we dismantle this a bit further without breaking it? What my idea is, there might be the possibility to fix this by... Yeah, that doesn't want to... Oh, yeah, gently, gently. So just dismantle that a little bit further. There might be the possibility of putting this in and maybe running a, uh, a pin through it effectively. So it's pinned through. We can see where... Oh, I can see on this side where that would normally go bit tricky. Let me have a little uh, think offline and just maybe dismantle this a bit further and we'll have a, a much closer study of that. It does look like it's going to be potentially extremely tricky to make this work because of course that fits in. But what I've discovered is the actual battery, if you put it down on its back, you can see how it how it's constructed. The actual battery slides in this way and touches this pad and what we've got though is the ability uh, to actually make our make a modification to this so if I get the battery and show you the battery is sitting like this when you put it in the device the battery sits like this but what you see is this whole region at the bottom when I turn it round you can see it's a very thin bit of plastic profile would have, would have snapped off the sort of tang with that piece on what it means is when the battery is in like that You've got this whole area to play with. So what I'm thinking, if I can get hold of some, uh, I've got some resins and things, let me make something that fills this whole region in, makes it solid, and then I can take a small drill, a micro drill bit, and drill through the new thing I've created here and actually push a pin in. So I might need to uh, sort of push this in and then push the pin in through the front of the case. As we saw, there's a small hole. Um, you won't be able to fit this in situ, but that's absolutely fine. And then with that wire, we can solder that wire in. And that should work because there's really no room inside that device for a battery. And if you're thinking, well, what about the other side? Well, you've got the same issue on the other side because you've got this uh, part here, which is for the headphone jack. So our options are limited. So I think trying to repair that is the key. So I'm going to have a look around, see what materials we have and hopefully we'll be able to fill that in. I did have a quick look on Thingiverse, see if anybody's tried to 3D print these, no one's bothered. So I guess they're not that interested in these things, but I'm gonna, I'm interested and I wanna get this working. Interestingly enough though, look how this uh, works. That's the actual mechanism that latches it. You've got so much opportunity to break those. Anyway, let's 
try to make a block of something for this. Nice. Right, it's time to resin. So I've made sure our piece of acrylic is nicely chamfered so it will fit into the shape of the unit. And I've removed the clear-ish, the translucent, it's not really clear, it's translucent tape. Make sure you do that because if you stick that to the protective tape, it's not going to adhere very well. And we're going to use just some literally Poundland five minute resin. That's all you need. And when I was drilling the uh, piece out here where I just want to make this nice and flat, I actually scuffed it up a little bit with the old mini craft just to make sure that it's got something to stick to. In fact, well, <laughs> I should have done that while I was thinking about it. Um, I might just do the same. I know it's nice to have these things nice and crystal clear, but actually... You do want to make it stick. And you can see I was being quite ginger with that because if that slips, that's a cutting bit. That will rip through my skin like nobody's business. If you're doing it at home, please don't do it with your bare hands like me. Use some proper tools. I mean, look at that thing. That is a lethal. That is literally a razor sharp. So I think my glue, if you, by the way, if you're mixing resin, try not to get air in it. Just smear it flat. Yep. And then scoop it back up into a ball and then smear it flat scoop it back just keep doing that and you'll get a good job that's pretty much what i want though okay so i'm going to put a little bit on the bottom that i've just scuffed up and a bit on the edge let's hope that works Pull that in. now i'm suspecting i'm gonna to have to reshape this in situ Yep, so I'm not too bothered right now. I know I'm going to have to reshape this in situ. But that's just to show you what it looks like. If the camera will like to focus on that, it seems to be having a lot of difficulty. No, there you go. As you can see, it's butted that right up to that one. And it's coming in at kind of an angle, but that's fine too. We're just going to make sure the battery is going to get in there, and that's that's my aim. And if you want to, belt and braces, you've still got the resin mixed get a little bit of extra resin if you've got a means of getting it in there nicely you could always try to scoop a little extra dollop there on the back <laughs> I'm looking at it though I kind of think I uh, I'm probably not going to be able to hmm. maybe I'll just leave that alone for now so I'm just going to leave this to sit for uh, you know five minutes ten minutes let that set and then we're going to shape that and hopefully get a pin through it somehow so my block is almost dry it's not 100% it's still a little bit of that you know resin tackiness but I've put the door in and you can see the pin the single pin that exists is sort of latched in and I'm just shutting that now to the position it would be when it's closed making sure that's sitting about right in fact I'm going to put a bit of pressure here on this end because I want it to kick out slightly and then what I'm going to do is just take this micro drill bit here and I'm just going to run it through the actual hole. There's a small hole here. What I did is I actually just moved a wire slightly out of the way because it was obscuring the hole. 
obstructing this hole and I'm just moving this up and down and that is basically it it's drilling the drill bit and I don't want to push too hard because as I said that resin is not dry yet so that's probably enough to just have a mark now and I'll just pop that out I just want to just double check it you see in fact look it really doesn't want to come out <laughs> I'm just going to poke that through that's because our block now even if I, think if I can just get Anyway, there is a hole on this side because our block of uh, plastic is now is actually just giving it as something to lever against. It's not as happy to pop out as it used to be. We'll get it out. There we go. So you can see, I've actually gone through just a little bit, maybe maybe a millimeter at that. So I've just gone through a millimeter. So what I want to do now, making sure. It's kind of even. You want to go through straight. So you want to make sure that actually comes out through here. You're not going through the block parallel to the edge of the block. You're actually going through it at an angle. But you know, you've got probably the opportunity to bend your bits of wire and things. So you've got always all sorts of ways of doing this. You can pop this back in the actual headphone it, itself if you want to just drill it and have a you know use that as a kind of a jig or hold it in your hand like this and be very careful so you don't want to go off at a weird angle and just slowly drill it by hand until it's exactly where you want it and it may take some time if you're really impatient you can pop your drill bit into your mini craft or dremel or whatever you've got in fact, I'm doing what I didn't want to do, and I'm going totally parallel. <laughs> That's going to be absolutely fine. That doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, if you're really impatient, though, pop it in your mini craft or your Dremel. But I don't think I don't think really it's. You, I don't think you need to really worry about those. Look, that's nice performance there. That's your your hole through there. So what remains is for me to now find something suitable. I haven't <laughs> allocated a piece of wire yet that I intend to actually poke through here. Looking at the plastic here though, it looks like you could go ooh, easily a whole mill. So you've got plenty to play with. Potentially, if you're keen, you could put a screw in as well. And all you need to do then is just go up through your different drill bit sizes if you like, got like mine got a whole selection you can just work your way up to the right size I'm gonna have a little route around now um, if you are using wire and uh, I am NOT because I don't think I found any make sure you're using a, a kind of a spring steel you don't want uh, anything that's too soft because if it bends it's gonna stay bent however that being said there's probably not too much force on this so you've got to decide your your particular use case um, I'll search let's see what I end up with success I've drilled this out a little bit bigger because I found something suitable and it's a I guess you call them a safety pin don't you and I've left it um, a little bit um, generous shall we say on the hole so you can see it slides in and out and the idea being once I'm ready I'm gonna just put a little bit of glue on the end and just spludge that in so there's no um, friction there so what I'll need to do, just to show you, when we put this in, because of the shape of that corner, it's going to stop our battery from sliding in. So just to imagine, if it's at this angle, the battery has to pass through there like that. And of course, and you can see that's why there's a certain edge here on that, see that shape there. That should be rebated out. So what we're going to have to do is take our Dremely tool and curve that part out. And that's what I'm going to do now.
Before fitting it, I glued this little doodad on there because it seemed that the latch mechanism on my one was missing. So I put this piece here. It was really just a piece of a servo, a bit of plastic. And you just got to make sure whatever protrudes here will fit inside this little rebate here. So just line it up with the edge of the metal tang and that'll lock in there nicely. So what I'm going to do is just really fit it. Well, while that glue is drying, because it's, it's well, curing, it's not quite cured yet. And I'm a very impatient fellow. I'm going to just continue, put on the old soldering iron, just continue to actually finish the job. And then just leave it there for a few hours till it's totally cured before jamming the battery in and really stressing any other stuff. And what else I'm going to do is probably cut this with some pliers. So we'll just use that piece to keep that nicely sound. So it's quite interesting really, while this is all going on, I've actually looked at another little uh, gadget I was given that's broken. And it's, uh, there, it's just over there, but that should make an interesting, interesting video, but I don't really want to do one job at a time, not to get confused. So I've just touched a touch of solder in there. And I'm gonna see if there's a way to do this nicely. Yeah, that's about the right angle I can do it without burning myself. And we're back. We're back in business. It's the bees knees, the bees knees. No, I don't know. I remember hearing somebody going on about that the business and the bee's knees are the same thing. So that's how it looks currently. I'm just going to put my pin in temporarily. I just want to see if the whole battery actually fits down the, the hole as it is. So pop it in. And it goes in nicely. There's the lid. In fact, if I turn this, there should be... Look, there's a green LED there. I don't know if you can just about see it. Ooh, it is coming on. And then it should clamp nicely. But I'm not going to clamp it yet because that is going to put a lot of force on that glue and ping that off. But also, it gives me the opportunity. I can file this down just to get it just right. So we'll, uh, we'll probably come back here in a moment. But let's just see how I'm going to trim this piece off. So... I suspect, looking at it, we've got the plastic of the case. It's going to sit like that. So I can leave it proud by probably a couple of millimetres. If I leave this proud by a couple of millimetres, it really won't go anywhere and the case itself will hold it in so I'm going to just hold it there you could measure it I suppose if you're a measury type person I'm going to do it with my eyeball Urgh. okay that doesn't want to cut but at least it's scored I'm trying to find a bit of these pliers which isn't totally mauled you won't be able to cut too many of these without wrecking your pliers, and I've basically done that too many times. There. I can probably actually just put all the screws back in. I don't think there's going to be a massive amount of adjustment needed, and what adjustment does need to be made I think I could do that from outside. So there. The pin is in. You can see it just in there. See it just rocking around a little bit. I'm not too keen on that. So I'm going to take a little bit of heat shrink. And let's make a little bearing. A little bearing for that. I'm sure under tension, you know, oh, it's just overkill, isn't it? Once that's under the tension of the spring of the battery, it's not going to do anything, but let's do it right. <laughs> Look at this, this is so tiny. Just pop that in there like that. 
can see that there. And I'm just going to use the heat of the soldering iron. Gently shrink it. Come on. Yeah. Jobs a good one. Look at that. <laughs> right, all the screws back in. And we shall test it. Test it momentarily. Just before we do, just see if there's any gotchas here. Mm. That pops on like so. That pops in like so. I don't think you're going to have any trouble. There's no gotchas there. You'll be fine. So there you pretty much have it. You've got the battery door in there and I've not quite shut it just to show you the effect but you've got that little wedge now and as you push it in I would suggest push that down and it locks in like so. Turn it on and off. Great success! And what I've done, I've made sure I've gone on the old interwebs. I went on eBay actually and ordered some aftermarket ear doofers just to sort of, in fact I think these probably were aftermarket ones I think I probably had re replaced the ones that were on it these ones seem to have succumbed to head juice and the problem is you've got all these oils and all of this stuff in your skin and your hair and it it's eroded that material that's not a problem so we've got those on the way and it actually does come with replacement uh, gauze pads here plus even replacement material to stick it all down so should be a pretty good job when it's done. So I hope that's of some use to you if you've got some broken Bose headphones or if you were just curious about what's inside, but go ahead, have a go at fixing them. I think you're gonna be pretty successful. As ever, thank you for watching. Oh, fortuitous bit of timing. Before I edited the video, of course there was some post. And the post feels to me suspiciously like some headphone thingies. So excuse all the banging, there's fireworks going on at the minute. So there's a lot of firework action happening outside. I've just been to the traditional school fireworks thing. Kids were not interested one bit, as per usual. Waste of money. So, I'm gonna take off these old crusty crusty ones and again, I'm pretty sure these were aftermarket ones, so don't um, don't think these were Bose ones. Well, I don't know. I, 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 how would you tell even? How would you tell? But I think they had it anyway. So these new ones seem to come with a, a bit of 3M. Look, a bit of 3M stuff to stick down. So before I do that, I'm just going to rub my finger on here. Yeah, it's. I want to make sure that they've got something to stick to. But the uh, bit of stuff that's still on there actually is still quite sticky. So that's good. Sticky plus sticky is good. So it actually says 3M. Uh, yeah. Gotta be a bit careful now. Ah, there you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. So if you're peeling it and you don't see the uh, sticky sticky, stop reset start your peeling process again could be a bit tricky though isn't it something sticky on something soft like this so it's really uh, curious watching the old fireworks wondering how much do fireworks cost i bet it's serious money like something redonkulous thousands upon thousands upon thousands of pounds yeah, so we'll put that in there let's push that down that's stuck on that one, now we'll do the next one. I have uh, to report back as well because although you're watching this it will be in the same video, it's uh, a couple of days later and our battery bay thing appears to be holding but we'll have another quick look. I think it was fine a moment ago when I checked it. 
Let's have a quick look. See, absolutely fine there. So good. So the power of those resins, but you really have to let those resins settle down. So, th oh, hello. The walls are happening, going off outside there. So just pushing those on. Yeah, they're looking pretty decent. You can actually get this bit as well, if you're keen. But I, know, I think these bits are sub. You know, if you're you're you wearing these a lot and you're on aeroplanes, I, I remember I had these on my head for hours. I mean, I have probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours on these. I would not. I'm not lying to you. I genuinely have. So if you think about all of the, uh, you know, head sweat, hair products. Um, all the bits and you know stuff, all of that is a trying to attack all of the materials of these things all the time. Oh, I'm having a bit of trouble fitting this one. Let's see if is there a way on these? They're not keyed. Yeah. Just gonna try one one more time using it that direction. I think it just needs a bit of there we go. Brute force and ignorance and plenty of it. Good. Oh, hello. Just rushing it, aren't I, really? Doing a good job of that. But you get the idea. Just work it in. Take your time. There's loads of these little uh, teeth in there, basically, and you want it to go under each one. There you go. That's it. Better. There. Good. I think I've got I've got a few more to do, but I can I can I can do those later. I can do those later. One more here. She. Yeah, that's it. Perfection. So hopefully that's uh, helped you out how to fix your battery door, but probably more likely how to put your uh, earmuffs on. Good as new. Save from the dead. Bye bye. <laughs>